다음번 발표해 주실 분은 캐나다의 하이드로제닉스 사의 앨런 네이즈 이사님께서 연료 전지를 활용한 수소 에너지 저장 및 모빌리티 적용 사례를 주제로 온라인으로 발표해 주시겠습니다. 준비가 되면 바로 시작하도록 하겠습니다. 안녕하세요. Um, it's a very uh, uh, an honor to be able to speak today. Unfortunately, I'm I'm not in Korea as, as very obvious, and I do miss uh, meeting up with friends. I've seen a lot of friends and, and former colleagues in the audience, so uh, let's hope in, in the next event uh, we can all be there. I'll talk a little bit about uh, what we're doing. Um, as you probably heard, Hydrogenics was purchased by Cummins recently. We are now part of the electrified business unit of Cummins uh, called the New Power Organization. And I'll talk a little bit about uh, how that integration is going and how we're a big part of that in, in the hydrogen uh, context. Um, we uh, believe that uh, the electric vehicle is evolving, uh, where the fuel cell part of that will be a big part of the electrification and zero carbon emissions in uh, transport and power. And we also believe strongly that evolving renewable energy will be able to allow us to capture um, green hydrogen via electrolysis. And that hydrogen evolution, we believe, is uh, a big part of what the Cummins New Power Organization is. The acquisition, uh, just as a reference point, was done last year. Uh, we are owned by uh, Air Liquide as well, uh, who owns 19% of us, Cummins 81. And this was the largest acquisition in the industry uh, to date, in the hydrogen industry. And we know surely in the next few years there'll be other acquisitions and other mergers. But uh, we were one of the first and, and we're proud to be a part of the, the new power organization, which does have a large offering. And that ability for us now to offer a full electric electrification solution is a big part of where we're going. Uh, we can offer batteries, we can offer other powertrain solutions. Uh, and with Cummins, a uh, large organization of almost 70,000 people, we have a presence globally today. Uh, this is the new power organization today. As you can see, it's a global organization. Uh, we are operating in Asia, Europe, and North America. Uh, that organization has quite an extensive reach and ability to offer uh, electrified powertrain solutions around the world. Uh, you can see in blue, these are the um, hydrogen uh, technology solutions and we've merged a lot of those operations as well. But uh, glad to see also we are expanding quite heavily uh, in our core markets where we were previously in Canada, uh, Europe and also in Asia. Um, that expansion uh, within the Cummins organization has allowed us to scale up, uh, which is really the story of the industry today. Uh, that's allowing us to scale up a lot quicker than we previously did as just hydrogenics. Um, 100 years of experience. Um, uh, what we found is one of the challenges we had as a small medium company was to scale up and have a, a great service organization. And that uh, with Cummins today has allowed us with a hundred year old service organization to support customers around the world and the many markets where hydrogen is embarking on. Today we're in heavy duty, but we're moving into construction and other light duty applications, marine power generation, et cetera. Um, Cummins has been there for a hundred years and that has allowed us to build a service and support organization uh, in conjunction with the existing structure that's there today. Um, where the market is going, and I'm sure we've all seen a lot of these slides, and, and we strongly believe heavy duty is, is a big part of that. We're very aggressively operating in the truck, bus, train markets today, um, and we strongly believe that that will continue where heavy duty is probably the leader in the hydrogen uh, market and then adoption uh, as we've seen in, in great developments in the industry today. Our product lines are both power and mobility solutions, but as you may know, we do operate uh, a large uh, component and we are one of the world leaders in electrolysis, both alkaline and PEM technology, offering a range of solutions from small capacity systems to very large megawatt systems in both uh, electrolysis and fuel cells. 
We've done some of the tougher projects around the world. There's been a lot of great announcements on, on the concepts and ideas. Uh, we believe we're one of the world leaders in actually operating and, and running commercial projects. Uh, first fuel cell trains, uh, first of um, applications in a lot of the fueling station technology, uh, first power to gas technologies. Um, and also we've done a lot of combined projects. We're combining our existing uh, uh, electrolysis and fuel cell technology together. Um, so we're fairly unique in that uh, avenue where we have both technologies working together. Um, we believe today we have one of the world's most advanced fuel cell modules. Um, it's a low pressure system, high reliability. We don't need a humidifier, a great stack life. And this is really uh, suited to heavy duty applications. Um, so we, we believe we will continue to innovate, but today we believe we have one of the, the better solutions on the market in the fuel cells, uh, fuel cell market. Um, our next generation uh, systems are growing in capacity um, and we're moving into higher capacity systems today. Uh, but we also do multiples of those systems in our HD30 and our HD45 systems. Um, I won't go into each project, but basically what I wanted to say as, as a general thought on this, these slides is we've been doing these heavy duty projects for a long time, uh, different applications. Uh, commercial applications for a very long time. So you can see here in, in trucking applications, freight trucks, uh, municipal fleets. Now we're into our seventh project and we've got some new announcements in uh, municipal fleets and public sanitation projects. Heavy duty uh, delivery vehicles. We've been doing this for some time. A lot of work with UPS and others, but we'll continue to do uh, municipal and delivery truck uh, fleets applications. Uh, ground support equipment, um, air support equipment. Uh, we've done a lot of unique vehicles and applications around the world. Uh, urban transit buses. Uh, this is obviously a very uh, high profile application today um, and, and a growth application in the industry. And we've been doing a lot of these projects around the world. A marine environment. This is a growing area and we've done a lot of unique projects, but we're also deploying the world's first commercial ferry project later this year in, in San Francisco. Um, and some of our recent uh, projects, uh, heavy duty vehicles, uh, our Scania project in, in Norway, where we're deploying four uh, trucks uh, there. And uh, as I mentioned, the UPS vehicles. The advantages of a lot of these are in the heavy duty environment, we're, we're essentially saying that we're doing the same applications that you can do today with diesel or petrol. And, and that's a, enlightening for a lot of fleet operators because they can allow themselves to do the same type of interfaces. They don't have to change the usage pattern, uh, which they may have to do with battery electric vehicles. So we strongly believe this is a great replacement for, for uh, um, carbon emitting technologies. Um, the one of our most exciting projects is the Alstom Crane train project. Today we have now uh, orders uh, for over 200 trains uh, for Alstom in countries like the UK, uh, Netherlands, Italy, etc. And this is the world's only 200 kilowatt system running commercially today. We've now got over 180,000 kilometers of usage on that system. Um, so it's a great example on heavy duty and large applications in, in the fuel cell world. And where we're going in the future, uh, next generation applications, we, we signed an agreement with Alakai in, in California for uh, a fuel cell commuter uh, a plane as well. Uh, that's obviously uh, being developed, but that's where we, we see a lot of these growing applications where maybe battery electric vehicles cannot uh, compete and, and liquid hydrogen powered vehicles are, are definitely an option. This is just a summary of some of the uh, applications we've done. We've deployed over 2,500 systems globally. Uh, we had the world's largest fuel cell fleet running in China with 74 buses for now two years already. Uh, we've done the first commercial fuel cell train and uh, fuel cell heavy duty trucks. And just quickly on some of our applications in the, uh, these are just some of the, the fuel cells, but on electrolysis, uh, we deployed the world's first, 
uh, megawatt electrolysis system, um, and we believe that allows for a large reduction of, of, of total overall cost for electrolysis, which is the key uh, driver in our industry in electrolysis. Uh, we've deployed now a 20 megawatt solution in Canada. This innovative technology is now scaling up more and more where we're deploying uh, upwards of three megawatt uh, electrolysis stacks, single stack systems, which reduces the, the cost of infrastructure in electrolysis, which is a, a big driver, as, as I mentioned, in the industry. Uh, that electrolysis plant in Canada is a 20 megawatt system that's being deployed this year and will be operational this year. And we've deployed over 1,500 systems in, uh, for over 60 years. Um, these are just some of our customers uh, in the green hydrogen space, and we strongly believe that this will be a big part of the, both the blue and the green hydrogen story, but we're more focused on what we call green hydrogen using excess renewables. The power to gas and power to industry, power to fuel, power to power uh, our markets are growing, and our ability to offer a complete solutions is a big part of that. Uh, Station-wise, and I know there's a big growth in Korea, but now we have over 60 stations deployed, uh, and we will continue to work with our partners uh, globally to deploy more and more stations around the world. And just as a summary, Cummins in Korea, we have deployed a megawatt fuel cell in Korea at a, at a refinery. Uh, we've deployed some of the, the tougher applications in mobility sector. We're, we're looking to do more of that. Uh, we have an extensive service organization in Korea already. We have an MOU with Hyundai, one of the leaders in Korea, and we're obviously open to further discussions and partnerships in Korea as well. With that, I think uh, just as a summary, uh, we are a complete electrified power solution, and we will hopefully continue our cooperation in Korea and, and uh, continue our, our support in Korea as well. Thank you. Thank you for nice presentation. Uh, 혹시 예, 큰 박수 한번 부탁드립니다. 예, 이걸로 이제 일단 발표는 다 마쳤고요. 혹시 질문 있으시면 한두 개 정도 받도록 하겠습니다. 어, 아 예, 저기 아 지금 이게 적절한 질문인지 모르겠는데요. 어, 지금 승용차도 그렇고 상용차도 그렇고 연료 전지의 수소 공급 방식을 그 압축 방식으로 사용을 음. 하고 있는데. 아 이게 그 고압이라는 게 굉장히 좀 여러 가지 난제가 있기 때문에 향후에 뭐 충전소도 그 액화로 움직이고 있는 방향인데 혹시 상용차 부분에서 그 연료 공급 방식을 어 액화나 뭐 다른 방식을 혹시 검토하는 게 있는지 좀그 설명을 해줄 수 있는지 궁금합니다. 조금 분야가 다르긴 한데 아마 대답은 해주실 것 같습니다. Um, on our, we're not involved in, in a production of technology in, in liquid hydrogen. Um, one of our, our owners, Air Liquide, is actually one of the leaders globally in liquefied hydrogen technology. So uh, I could refer you to them, but uh, ourselves as, as a company, we're not really involved in liquefied hydrogen. I, I strongly believe that this will be a growth area. Uh, as we get better lower cost technology in liquefied hydrogen but at least today uh, i think that's um, how would you say a work in progress where this is uh, expanding but uh, i think it, it will take a little more time uh, to get greater cost reductions uh, as you probably know that liquefied hydrogen is a big story for transport let's say of, of large capacity of hydrogen potentially from canada to korea or, or australia to korea uh, but on the fueling station side, we, we really haven't done work in that area to, to be very open. 네, 아까 패널 토론할 때도 이야기 나왔는데 고압 수소하고 액화 수소로서 장단점이 있어서 하나를 결정하기에는 굉장히 어려움이 많습니다. 역시 엘런 네이즈도 시간을 좀더 두고 봐야 된다고 이야기하네요. 네, 혹시 질문 있으시면 하나 정도만 더 받고 마무리하도록 하겠습니다. 어 조금 말씀을 드리면 사실 캐나다에는 그 발라드사하고 방금 발표한 그 하이드로제닉스다 두 사가 이제 수소 연료전지 업계의 그 쌍두 마차라고 할수 있고요 굉장히 큰 회사입니다 뭐 하이드로제닉스의 여러 가지 연료전지 시스템에 뭐 
이제 응용에 대해서 발표해 주셨고 역시 수전의 쪽에 대해 주셨는데 사실 하이드로제닉스는 연료전지보다는 수전의 쪽이 훨씬 강점을 가지고 있는 회사입니다. 우리나라에도 아마 코롱 하이드로제닉스로 아마 들어와 있을 거예요. 아, 질문이 없으신 것 같은데요. 그러면 이걸로 아 저기 질문 있네요. 저기 마이크 부탁. 아 죄송합니다. 제가 그쪽을 못 봤습니다. <웃음> 그 하이드로제닉스가 온사이트 수소 충전 소 이쪽 분야에서도 앞서가고 있, 있는데 혹시 미주 시장뿐만 아니라 한국 시장에서도 그런 이 사업 분야를 진출하실 계획은 없는지 아니면 있었는데 어떤 어려움 때문에 못했는지 궁금합니다. Um, good question. Right now, we, we definitely would like to enter that market. Uh, what we've seen more in Korea to date is obviously a strong uh, capability and uh, focus on blue hydrogen and, and natural gas. Uh, we, we do hope that there'll be a growth in, in, in electrolysis in Korea. Uh, we, we have talked to some stakeholders, but we're willing uh, and open to talk to more. Uh, companies in Korea that would be interested in our uh, world-leading electrolysis technology and and we hope that there'll be a, a growth in that often that comes with greater renewables as well um, you know in a lot of the stations that we do in Europe uh, Canada and, and other markets we're using excess renewable energy and uh, we, we strongly believe that um, that with that growth of renewables there'll be a growth in electrolysis as well So we strongly hope that there'll be other partnerships that we can create in Korea to expand on this. Uh, we've, as I mentioned, deployed uh, some of the tougher and, and larger projects in, in fueling. And a lot of that has been what we call green hydrogen using excess renewables. So we're definitely open to it and, and we hope to enter more in Korea in our electrolysis uh, technology. Yeah, 네 계속 그 되는 긴 시간 동안 참석해 주셔서 감사하고요. 요걸로 이제 첫 번째 세션을 마치도록 하겠습니다.